Salmon friends. Welcome to the Joy of Sam with Rachel. I'm Rachel Kuhn and it's Wednesday's Kit Class. Today I'll be showing how to make an easy shaker card. Go to hold while I flip and we'll get started. One second. All right. Shaker cards are super fun, but sometimes they require a lot more effort than we want to give, especially if you want to make a lot of them. So this one today I'm showing you is really easy and is super fun and versatile. It could be used for a lot of occasions. I'm using the stamp that says cue the confetti and then I've put in the bottom the year. So this one I would use for two things, either a um, happy new year kind of card or a happy graduation card and that's the year that they're graduating. If I were to take out that year, it could just be in a really awesome cue the confetti shaker card, which would be great for birthdays or anything you're celebrating. All right. It's Wednesday's kit class. So that means that these, this kit I will send out with to you guys. If you order between now and this Friday, $35 worth using the hostess code. So that's something that you are wanting to get. Make sure you place that order online with me and I will send you this kit in the mail. And some of the items, the paper might be a little bit different, but it'll be from the same paper pack. So I do suggest items if you want to get to that $35 mark and or items you need to, to complete this kit. Um, one being this pattern play stamp set. I'm using the cue, the confetti and these cute little um, starbursts. I want to call them kind of like firework look looking and also that's something I recommend if you don't already have the and stamp the die is called Playful Alphabet. So you see that better? Sorry. Let me show you what they look like. This is something else I suggest and that I use in this kit to make that 2021, which I don't know about you, but I'm hopeful will be a great year. That's all in here. And these dies are so much fun and you make things personal even if you were to put something else right there um, with these cutout letters and shapes. I also use the layering circles to help us with our little tag right here and the playing with patterns DSP is in this kit as well it has great paper I know I keep it still in here so it's hard to see but it has so many great pieces of paper and these are six by sixes and so it's great and easy to store love love that paper and the color scheme there and then I'm also using these uh, flowers for every season. So you can get it to focus so you guys can see that a little bit better. Oh, I don't think it's going to get to our words. Let me just open it so you can kind of see these ones. These are these really fun gems that we're using to put into our shaker card today. And you can put anything in your shaking cards. Um, sequins are great. Little pieces of paper confetti work wonderful. I just happen to like this one and the color of this one. Um, I always recommend hair tape for this project. And I'm trying to think there's anything I'm missing. I am using the Just Jade ribbon as well. And I think that's the most of the items. Oh, the main star. I forgot to tell you about that one. It's this awesome clear envelope. It's kind of hard to see because it's clear, but you can tell that it's there because it has this adhesive strip right here on the back. And I'll show you how we use these. I think it's $6 for a pack of 50, which is a great deal, which means you can make 50 shaker cards with just buying one pack. So really awesome and fun. Okay, let me go ahead and be sure to comment if you're here. I love seeing them or if you're watching the replay or even if you're watching on YouTube later, be sure to say something. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings about the card. This card was actually inspired by another demonstrator and I wrote down her name. Let's see if I have it on the back. Yes, her name was Rosemary Gonzala and she also lives in California. And she did this one with a new stamp set that's coming out in the mini catalog. This one's all current, so you can use it and make it now. All right, you guys ready for some measurements? And we'll get started. I have our regular card base right here using the Just Jade. And I have it going the eight and a half by the five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. That's pretty typical for our card bases. And then I have some DSP right here. And those, 
This one measures at four by five and a quarter. It's a great card front size, so it makes it frame it nicely. I have all my little numbers there. I'm just making push them off a little bit. There we go. I also have the shape um, or the Whisper White, which is our current white color. I don't know if you saw my announcement about the basic white. It will be coming out here soon. But until we have that, I still have our Whisper White, which measures the exact same measurement as our DSP. So there's not a whole lot of measuring, and a lot of them are very simple measurements, too. I did go ahead and die cut these two shapes out. And let me show you a tip real quick, because sometimes you wonder how to know what size to use. And I never tell you the actual, um, like I don't have them labeled or anything like that when I use these dies. I just tell you that's what I use. But the way you can tell which one to use for your card is that you take the die, and because this is two size, I would just go over it like that, and I could say all of my words would fit within this circle. See that? I can even flip it over, it can give you a better idea, just like that. Um, and then I will line this up too to make sure that these ones are the layer ones that go together. And I can see my little fringe on the outside, the scalloped edge. So I know those two are a match for me. And then also, if I didn't have um, this handy, if I hadn't bought this yet, what I could do with my catalog even is lay a die over it in the catalog because in the catalog it is also the shape of the size or true to its shape. So that's my extra little tip today for this one. All right. So we're going to go ahead and celebrate 2021 by putting in our numbers right here in the bottom. And I did it earlier, cut out in the Jess Jade, our numbers. But I think I'm going to switch it over and go gold. I know a lot of times you see um, Happy New Year's with like the black and gold look. And I... I think that's very pretty and classic looking, but I love the playful colors of this one. And I love um, to just add a little bit of that metallic look. My tip though, is you wanna start with the very last number. So we're gonna flip this over and put just a little bit of glue and then we'll glue it down to the corner. So you gotta think a little bit backwards here. There we go. We'll put our one right there. And like I said, this would be great for a graduation card if you're not sending it for New Year. However, if you are sending New Year's cards because you didn't quite get to make all your Christmas cards you wanted, this would be a great one to make. Here's our 21, just like that. I'm trying not to get too much glue on there, but we're sleeping out just a little bit. And that's okay. My fine tip glue pen probably would work better for something like this or the stickers. I should have cut it out with the sticker, this um, adhesive sheet. I talked about that yesterday in my Tuesday's tip. And this would have been a great tip to use those sheets for these little die cuts like these. But that's okay. Some, some of you guys don't have those yet. And so this is good to show just the basic way to glue it down. All right. I want that dry just a little bit. So while that's drying, let's go ahead and do our stamping. Before we put that in. All right. So we're going to grab our circle, which is the, um, and our Whisper White and our Just Jade is our ink of the day. The funny thing about this um, paper here, it actually uses Coastal Cabana as the color, but because it has that ombre look to it, I can totally go ahead and get it away with using this Just Jade to make it look just awesome. All right, here's our stamp. We're using the Q, the confetti. I'm going to ink it up and get that. Make sure it's all on there and go just about the middle and press down. Lift it up. Awesome. Next, we're going to get our little starburst. And this one you can either do full on strength or you can stamp off and have that um, different coloring. I'm going to go ahead and just have it full strength, but not have all the image on there. So you can see how it went off on the circle a little bit, and that's okay. That's why we have the scrap paper underneath or our grid paper. Love it. Then we need to glue it to our scallop, just jade. 
And while we have that starburst out, let's go ahead and stamp on our corners inside of our card as well. You could even do the back of the card if you wanted on your card base. Let me get this piece up so we can get it lined up right. So you guys can see that. I just pull it until it looks like it has it even on all sides. And that's why we use that Tombow glue so we can wiggle it and move it around. Okay. Let's go ahead and stamp on these edges here. And for this one, I went ahead and stamped on that top corner is there. I'm going to do opposite for this one. We're going to go bottom right and top left. There we go. Perfect. We'll set that aside. We'll glue that into our card base in just a little bit. The next part we want to do is for our little label here. I'm going to grab our gems. And I'm going to just glue on three of them. And we're just going to kind of grab them out. My hands are going to be sticky now from that glue that I spilled earlier. So we'll see how well we can do this. We'll have those two, and I'll grab one more tiny green one. Okay. Hopefully that's good. And now what we want to do is just put a little bit of glue dots right where we want it. So I put one right there. I'm going to try to keep it little. This is a newer glue, so it's coming out a lot faster than I want. That's not too bad. Okay. I'll just flip these over and pick them up. If you have a, um, I'm trying to think. Okay, I can't think of what it's called right now. Tweezers. If you have tweezers, that would be helpful to use at this for this step right here. Let's go ahead and put this one on that glue spot. I have tweezers, but I rarely use them for these things. I usually use it for my heat embossing when I want to hold the paper. Okay. And then I always use the tweezers for that so I don't burn myself. Okay, we're going to let these ones dry again. And then we will put dimensionals on the back after that's dry. Let me go ahead and close up our ink. And we'll get ready to show you how to make the shaker card part. So we're going to grab that clear envelope that we have. And we're going to go ahead and open it up like this and stick in our piece of paper that we have. I want you to notice this is, is not the exact size of this envelope. And you can even do the shaker card in different sizes. And I'll show you how you can change that up. So I'm just gonna stick it in there. You see how it has that extra on the top there? Don't worry. Oh, that's looking great it's already. Let's go ahead and put some of our gems in there. You're just going to take it and sprinkle as much or as little as you want. Go crazy or be light-handed. Totally up to you. Then I think that looks pretty good. When it feels about that bottom right there, I think that's a, a, a fair amount to give to shake. Let's make sure we have that where we want it to be. Get our paper back down in that corner. There we go. Then, what we're going to do is go ahead and seal off the back. And this little one stuck right there. I'm going to get it so it's on the right side. I'm not too crazy with my shaking. You might be okay. Okay, so we're going to flip this over and remove that adhesive strip right here. And we're going to pull it so it goes right to that um, DSP line right there. I'm going to take my bone folder and get it so it's nice and creased a little bit nicer. Okay, then let's go ahead and move, make sure our paper's moved all the way down to that bottom. So we're going to get ready to fold the top. It's looking pretty good. Okay, now how we can make it the size that we want it is by folding this top over and glue, or taping that down. And you just use your regular um, scotches tape, if that, you have that handy. I'm still a little bit worried about how this DSP needs to get shimmy down. Let me see if I can't get that down real quick. I probably shouldn't have sealed it up quite. Oh, there we go. I've moved it. Perfect. That's better. All right. So now we're going to fold this part over. And let's say if I had it by like two inches by four inches or something, I would just fold that all the way over and tape it there as well. So like I said, you can make the shaker card different sizes even. My good old fashioned scotch tape. We'll grab two pieces. We want to get mostly these corners right here. 
I just put a little bit of tape here on this edge like that and then let me get one more that one folded and then this one also in that corner there perfect next while we still have it on the back let's go ahead and use our tear tape when you put the tear tape on right now do not take off the backing we're going to save that for later so we're just going to line it up on here so it's ready to go when we're ready and we'll get it on all of our sides all around it if you're really nervous you can go ahead and put an extra strip of it in the middle but I think you'll be just fine and sturdy with it being just around the edges of it. We didn't put too much to make it too heavy. So I have this extra right here. I'm going to just tear it off, and that's what I could put in the middle. There we go. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and flip it over. It's looking pretty awesome. I know I used a different piece of paper this time, and we'll see how much we like it over the polka dots versus the diagonal stripes. I think both are going to be really fun. I'm going to get that tape out of the way and go on to our next step. Let me go ahead and put our lid on our gems, though, because knowing me, I will steal them. These are the Flowers for Every Season gems, which are in the annual catalog and will be here at least until June. You know what would have been really cool is if I would have put these also in there and these little numbers could also be part of the shaker card. I can save those for the next one. All right, now we need to do ribbon time. So we're going to grab your ribbon, and you should have about 18 inches or so. I usually don't measure, and I'll just bring it up to about that length and say that looks about good. And we'll cut it at an angle, and we're going to tie a bow. I want to warn you, this is going to be the hardest part of the card, is getting this bow on nice for me. Because this plastic is a little bit slippery for the shaker card. Let's see how I do. No pressure. <laughs> how do you guys like your bows? Are you good at them? They give you a hard time. It's really hit and miss for me, but luckily they're pretty forgiving and I can always fix it. So that one looks crazy to me. It has that end going right there. So let me undo it and we can fix it. Sometimes I do bunny ears and then sometimes I do the wraparound. It just depends on what I'm trying to have look be. Okay, that one turned out way better. I think the secret's just going nice and slow. Now we can just pull our ends to make it the size that we want it and tighten it and trim our ends. Let's go just about like that. We'll make this a big, a big playful bow. A little angle right there. However, we do want to slide it over just a little bit like that. And let's go ahead and flip it over. And remember that tear tape we put on there? Let's get ready to put that into our card base. Let me show you a tip, though, because you'll notice some of it's covered up right now with our ribbon. So when we do that one, we'll peel it halfway, and then we'll start on the other side and do the other half. So I'll go like that. And let's see if we can get this one. Oh, it's very sticky. This is why I didn't want to unpeel it before because I didn't want um, it to get stuck to the grid paper. Okay, now we can go ahead and push down right there and our ribbon will stick nice there as well. Now just be mindful of where you already peeled off. We have that centerpiece. We can stick our ribbon there. We'll get our bottom. And we are almost done. This trigger card is coming together super fast. And once you know how to do it, you can make them over and over again with very little troubles. I made my first one this morning. <laughs> this style, at least. I've made other shaker cards, which require the foam adhesive, which is also really fun, but it does take a little bit more patience. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hover it over our card base and push down and lay it on there nice and flat oh i'm loving it it's looking way cute all we have to do now is add our tag and our inside of our dsp not dsp sorry our whisper white 
Let's put some dimensionals on the back here of our label, just like that. Take off these backings and flip it. All right, ready? And shake our shaker card. So that will go down. Put our label just right there next to that bow. Oh my goodness. I love it. It is so cute. Well, let me add that in the inside. And grab my seal and glue that on. And there, there we go. That's uneven right there because of the shaker card, so I needed to move it just a little bit. Okay. We'll put this inside. This one I will leave blank except for these little spots. So just in case I choose it to be for a graduation versus a new year. We'll bone fold our, our edges. And there we go. That cutest shaker card. You see that? Oh, I love it. I love it in that um, gold paper as well, that gold foil. I like how it kind of catches on that 2020. And I'm going shake it up. I sure hope our 2021 is a year that is shaken up and is different than our 2020. I hope you guys have learned something new today and had fun with this bright New Year's card, graduation card, or just to celebrate. Happy stamping, everyone. Have a great week. Goodbye.